Hi everybody, this is a podcast where real doctors discuss fake medical emergencies. That means that unless, by the power of Grayskull, you have the power, this podcast is not medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Also, the movie we're discussing today got us pretty riled up, and we ended up using some adult language. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that in case you're listening at work, or around the kids, or, I don't know, at church for some reason, so you can put in some headphones. Hi everybody, I'm Jackson Bain. I'm Johnny Kolosinski. You might remember me from such podcasts as a really good podcast, a Dr. Cox appreciation show. That's where you're going with that one. (laughs) Since we did last week's Scrub episode, I've been, I've made it through all of the first season of Scrubs. Uh, this is Hi Everybody, a bad medicine podcast. Every week we talk about what Hollywood gets right and wrong about medicine and how the body works. You can find this podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Hi Everybody MD or on the World Wide Web at HiEverybodyMD.com. And then you can also call us at 530-DOCTORB. Uh, <laughs> wait, be... wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> I feel like I've heard you say that, but I haven't processed it until this time. That is 530 Doctor. Yes. The B stands for what this week, Darn? The B stands for brain, as in we're only using 10% of our brain. <laughs> yep, that's right. We're actually going to do Lucy, the 2014 Scarlett Johansson film about how we do not use all of our brain. And this week, as we've had many times, yeah. we have a guest. Yes, once again, Dr. Greg Winter. Hi everybody! I love that you that people know to say the name of the show. It makes was, me so happy. I was trying to come up with a different thing to say each time I was on, and then that meant I would have to remember the things that I said. So you feel my pain. Just hi everybody is fine. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was gonna go with what's up peeps, but I might have said it last time. Yeah, maybe. Someone tell us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, five three zero five three zero dot org. Um, so yeah, this movie this week really hurt all of us. Not as bad as The Resident did for me, but pretty bad. Uh, this this was for me as the as a non doctor. This was the worst thing we've watched. This was a slog. It yeah. was. It, it wasn't a slog. It and was enjoyable because Luke Basson does pretty things. Yeah, Luke uh, Basson, Fifth Element. Uh, Fifth Element. Oh, that you know what makes sense. Uh, Fifth Element. <laughs> Everything's no, uh, fitting into place. Uh, uh, not Sky Captain in the uh, what's the what was Valerian. The, Valerian, thank yeah. you. And the City of a Thousand. It's a thing. The planet. The City of a Thousand it. Planets. I yeah, it, it was. You know, there was a rooftop showing at the Hilton of the Fifth Element, and I dressed up as Ruby Rod, and I was awesome. That I mean, but I was too chicken choice. to dance around when I was supposed to. <sighs> you know, you there's know some the, good pictures though. You know. <laughs> WonderCon and Comic Con are coming up. Yep, and I, hopefully we'll be that. I'm pretty sure I have the wig. That's not a wig you throw out. No. <laughs> I mean, you had a sock monkey hat for a while too. I did. Yep. I made that. That was a good, good costume. Uh, but so, I also have to say, how dare you, Johnny, saying this movie was not as bad as Human Centipede? Human Centipede is a joy. Human Centipede was so. This movie took itself 100% seriously in a way that Human Centipede did not. Because Human Centipede <laughs> knew that it was a film about sewing people to other people's butts. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I just didn't think that that was going to be a thing I ever heard. <laughs> like, this movie took itself Too more ser- seriously movies. than Human Centipede. Which is Morgan movie. Freeman talked over rhinos having sex. Oh my god. That... You were giggling like a school child, <laughs> and it was very funny. I was not. I, I, I wasn't giggling because oh my god, sex. I was giggling because oh my god, this made it into the final cut of this freaking movie. Debatable. <laughs> and also, oh my I god, think, sex. I think there was. A, I think there was both, but also knowing that it's from the Fifth Element, like it that made it make way more sense. I would sort of like to watch it again, knowing that, but also I'm I, not watching this. The anymore. Sixth Element guys is drugs. Yes. <laughs> Which is kind of the whole premise of this whole movie. Yeah. Um, they started in Taiwan, and mm-hmm. uh, Scarlett Johansson, who plays Lucy, I know, shocker, spoilers. Um, What's makes... Lucy's last name? Because we saw her passport. I think it's like Dylan or something. No, there Should wasn't say... one. No, there was. There oh, was. Dang it, I'm wrong. Lucy, last name? <laughs> no, <laughs> it was, was Lucy like Dylan or Dylan? This is stupid that I noticed that. 
When I say hello, <laughs> Boozy Thompson, and press firmly on your foot. You say hello. <laughs> but she ended up with uh, this random, was it named Richard or whatever? Yes. And then he yeah. slams a handcuff onto her holding a suitcase. They're in Taiwan to meet Korean gangsters. Yeah, it's it's all a drug deal gone bad, but it's it's so the premise is so thin. Like they already know what this drug does; they know everything about it. Why do they have to like? Why is she a part of it in any way? Yeah, why did they strap her? Why why to the why is he delivering the drugs? Yeah, as opposed to I mean, if they have this, it, so they they've got this innate or innate. This complex uh, Guys, this, method this of delivery. This isn't a cartel it. podcast. Okay? Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get to the bottom of this. But yeah, they're like in the lobby. He mm-hmm. slams it on. She he sends her. She's in. delivering the drugs. She's delivering. She doesn't know yet. She's she delivering a suitcase. Yeah. And then he gets shot with the brightest red blood I've ever seen in my life. But the window doesn't shatter. I know we're not a physics podcast, <laughs> but I expect something to happen. And then they go upstairs. And it was it was strange because he clearly knew that there there was danger. Yeah, but he yeah. clear he stuck around to be like, hey, yeah, make sure you make this deal. I'm I'm just right outside. I'm wearing my knockoff Stetson cowboy hat. Yeah, they really they they put a lot of time into that. It's a Stetsford. It's a Stetsford. <laughs> but they bring it up there. They find four packets of some kind of powder or crystal, which look just like blue sky it looked like blue sky <laughs> or like blue confetti yeah and then they give it to some random junkie to i don't to, to test it to make test sure you gotta that have a junkie in town yeah. to test to, it to, to make sure it's really the chili pea but he used like a straw that looked like it came from sonic and just like slurped up a bunch of stuff like a milkshake i mean there's also this you know if you're gonna ingest something you want it to be in a form that your body can take and that was those were large crystals that's like it's like salt. It's yeah, like it was salt. like salt. salt. Yeah, <laughs> like you don't. That was not even sea salt. That looked like salt you would uh, put on the road to. Ice. <laughs> it looked like rock salt. It, it looked like it, rock it might salt. have been what they used. And it's just that's going to be irritating, and maybe that's why he had the reaction that he had. Or really bad bad yeah. mouth. <laughs> he did have really bad mouth. Really bad mouth. I was going to ask you about that because that is not something I've seen. So you are an ER doctor. Surprisingly, that that guy's mouth was still not the worst meth mouth I've seen. Where. It gets so rooted out. So the reason why you get meth mouth is meth dries out all of your oral mucosa. Mm. So because I like when I learn things. <laughs> so when you're not making saliva, bacteria eats out your teeth. So people who like don't drool when they're sleeping or have very dry mouth are actually prone to having worsening um, dental infections. Hmm. So, or if you don't brush your teeth while you sleep before you go to bed and you have dry mouth, you actually can root out the whole teeth. So I've actually seen people with meth mouth where you can actually see the nerve roots inside of their Ooh, mouth. I'm uncomfortable. It smells lovely. Like, it is probably one of the worst smelling things I've ever smelled. <laughs> I feel like you're lying to me. This, this podcast is basically a bad smells podcast. <laughs> I mean, you, if I can transmit smells through podcasts, I would just so you can smell it. Now. I'm just glad we can't uh, for everyone listening. I mean, I lived in the land of meth which was That's true. New, Mexico. New Mexico. Yeah, they, I mean... They literally set a meth show in New Mexico. Correct, yeah. Which was a good tie back to, you know, the stuff <laughs> looks like... Blue Sky. Yeah, yeah, it looked like Blue Sky. What did you call it? Better Call ScarJo? Yeah, Better Call ScarJo. <laughs> um, my personal headcanon, by the way, is that this is a direct sequel to Lost in Translation. Yeah. And, like, you know... She, she fell on some hard she, times She fell on some hard times after... Uh, uh, after Bill after Murray Bill left, left. <laughs> whispered something into her ear, and she's like, "What do I do?" Now? <laughs> and he was yeah, like, "What he whispered, go so mad." I mean, you you mentioned Lost in Translation, and I think I would be remiss remiss if I didn't bring this up because we use a lot of interpreters and translators in my work, and there's a difference between translators and interpreters. A translator is written, interpreters are audio. So hmm. like, so when you're when you have a meeting with someone and there is somebody tra- and someone translating the language for you, that is an interpreter, not a translator. So an interpreter translates what they say? Well done, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a translator interprets what's on the what's, written page. What's written? <laughs> I th- I'm glad we could clear that up. Uh, questions, 530-DOCTORB. Can I tell you my favorite interpreter story that has nothing to do with this movie whatsoever and then probably cut it out in editing? <laughs> nope. I want this to stay. It's not right. Well, everything stays. Everything stays. <laughs> um, so Everyone Fred, fights. Uh, no one quits. <laughs> oh, I just watched that movie two days ago. It's such a good movie. Starship Troopers? Yeah. <sighs> I think it's a perfect movie. Paul Vanderhoeven is... is 
Oh yeah, they, they, Robo, RoboCop and Starship Troopers are. Yeah, yeah. Paul Vander Hooven is Luke Basin with a sense of fun. <laughs> Italian finger kiss. I don't know who that is. I I'm gonna have to have some follow up after the podcast. Luke yeah, Basin is director of this one. Oh, I, I clearly wasn't listening. To <laughs> I don't take I don't take notes while we're doing the podcast. But. Anyway, story here. so uh, a friend of mine uh, was a sign language interpreter <laughs> living in Washington. I'm sorry, that's funny. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine was a sign language inter- interpreter in DC in like 2003, 2004, and had the lovely privilege of translating for George W. Bush. And when you're translating, especially sign language, you go word for word because what if there's a joke or something that depends on. Right. So she got to, to sign multiple times nuclear, pronounced <laughs> nuclear, and spell it out. Uh, that's that's someone enjoying their job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they should spell out each single yeah, letter. Yeah, spell out nuclear, pronounced N-U-C-L-A-R. That, I mean, that is part of the difference of it, is that they're... Part of that training is to say exactly yep. what someone is saying as, as opposed, opposed to, to an the uh, idea of what they're saying. Yeah, the translators interpreting meaning unless it's like legal. I mean, I'm glad she talked about nuclear and all the beautiful foliage <laughs> yeah. with that walking library. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I didn't know that it was pronounced foliage, or foliage until probably college. Look at all that <laughs> Too beautiful... many press conferences. <laughs> Look at all that beautiful foliage. Um... <laughs> but anyway, what's great about movies is we can discuss them. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a good kind of going backwards because someone was trying to explain how the brain works and it is Morgan Freeman whose name is Norman yeah we were watching this with the subtitles on and his name is Norman and it just felt so lazy I mean, like, be, why not just call him Morgan if you're gonna do that no that explains why in Invictus he was Morgan Mandela <sighs> ah yeah <laughs> good old Nelson Morgan <laughs> um, but he said that and I wrote this kind of verbatim. He said, "Only animals only use three to five percent of their cerebral capacity. Uh, humans use ten percent, and dolphins are smarter than us because they use twenty percent because they can use echolocation." And Greg brought up something. No, I did. Great. Jackson brought this. He Jackson said, brought he "Yeah, said, what about bats? Bats. <laughs> okay. bats also use echolocation. Does that mean bats are smarter than us?" Mm. They, the they live in caves full of their own poop. I, th- I think we've got one step up on Dolph. Not Again, just on Jackson lives in New Mexico. <laughs> Not just living in caves with their own poop, but if they fall down and land in their own poop, they drown in their own poop and can't escape. But their poop is worth lots of money. It's it good is. fertilizer. I learned that one. from Ace Ventura. I was going to say, Ace Ventura 2, When Nature Calls? I feel like I have a weird mix of knowledge of things I take for granted from movies and things I actually know. <laughs> like, like, we What's know that we don't use... 10% of our brain, yeah. but we don't know the value of right. guano. <laughs> I also learned that guano makes good plates. Oh, yeah? What are they? Because he licks the plate <laughs> and he goes, what's that taste? Mmm, guano. Uh, this is, the whole premise of this movie is just based on a, f- like, something that somebody read falsely. Like, humans don't use 10% of their brain. They use about 10% of their brain at a time-ish. Probably more... I mean, it depends so on what you're doing. That's like I will, saying that I will we say only this. use 33% of a stoplight. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's so good. I'm so upset that you came up with that analogy. Right. That's it's, not me. I stole it from the internet. But much it's true, like the premise because it's like, use. no, we use, our int- we use our entire brain. We just don't need to use all of it all of the I time. I think a good way to kind of set it up, too, is if you think your whole brain with your brain stem... <laughs> we only use 33%. That's fucking great. Oh, so good. But... You always use at least 10% of your brain. Because your brainstem is what drives you staying alive. <laughs> you, you have to be breathing and... and breathing. breathing. <laughs> the main thing is breathing. You Thank you, breathe. doctors. You have to be breathing <laughs> and breathing. Cosmos doctor, ER doctor. Yeah, we're so good at our jobs. Airway, um, breathing, circulation. Always. Two of them are <laughs> breathing. Yeah. <laughs> Two. Yeah, so you always are at least using 10%. But to say that you only use 10% at a time, or you only use at most 10% is a very silly premise in general. Um, I don't know why so many people went to Morgan Freeman's lecture, because he's talking a lot of nonsense. He was talking a lot of... And, and also, like, it's like he's talking, and they have all this intercut 
footage in there, but that footage is not in his lecture. If that footage was in his lecture, that would be a very entertaining lecture. It, like, yeah, yeah they, they cut into it like it was a PowerPoint. Like right. it was part of his PowerPoint, but his PowerPoint was right. on the There's screen a PowerPoint there, that's and it was there. a really bad PowerPoint. It's like, real hey, you want to see someone give birth? Followed by, hey, you want to see some uh, tigers doing it? No, because that's that's none of the things he was talking about. Like, had that all been intercut through, it would have at least you would have been engaged in that particular PowerPoint. Did he Instead, ever show he just a video? Still frames of text on, on the Did screen. he ever show a video of a dolphin? No, 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 no that not. they were all mammals. Right. <laughs> so why no, there were birds? There were birds. So dolphins are too smart to get their pictures taken? Dolphins are mammals. No, no. Dang he... it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know if you want to go back and cut that out. No, no. I can be dumb. No, he did He did show pictures, and they even showed echolocation, but they showed like a, a computer-generated image of echolocation, which... Well, dolphins are computer-generated. It's fine. <laughs> they, they basically showed uh, the deep blue sea cutout of what a dolphin could do with echolocation. Like, it was very basic CGI. Oh. I love Deep Blue Sea so much. But my favorite part of Morgan Freeman talking is he, you know, he's talking about how humans use 10% of their brain. We have all this untapped potential. Look at the dolphins, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, you know, as we use more of our brain, maybe this will happen. Actually, he doesn't say maybe. He says, then at about 20% of our brain, we'll be able to control all of our body's functions. And then appropriately, someone in the audience raises their hand and questions him. And he goes, this is just the hypothesis. Like, Dude, you can't you can't be in this lecture can, hall. Just can I also ask this, like, nonsense. what functions is he talking about? Like pee? Yeah, I mean, you know, your body. I, I can finally move my fingers. <laughs> it's presented in a horrible way. It's like this movie has so many good ideas that were not flushed out over their, whatever the other executives were doing on the table. I do like his other hypothesis. That was coke. They were doing coke on the table. <laughs> no, they were doing CPH four. We all know that. <laughs> That is what they were doing. But I do like his other hypothesis is that cells only exist to pass time. And if cells could choose, they would always choose immortality. And the first thing Greg and I said when he, when he said that is, oh, you mean cancer? <laughs> you mean cancer? Yeah, that's the, basically what cancer is. It is a cell that has lost its ability to die and reproduces infinitely. Yeah. So I'm a science fiction buff. Okay. Um, and like futurology buff and woefully uneducated. Uh, and I read about, what is it, telomeres that are the things that get shorter and shorter. Telomeres? Yeah. That, that, that get shorter and shorter and shorter as you age. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can just read like them, we can live forever. We can't though. Because it's almost like redundant DNA material that every time you replicate it, telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter each time you do it. The problem is, this is not what cancer is. Cancer just loses the function to delete bad cells. So there's something called apoptosis, which causes cells to... Yeah, he was a bad guy in Stargate. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Wow, that was a good one. Um, but apoptosis is what tells cells that are damaged to kill itself. Um, cancer cells don't have that. So they grow and expand in a space that they should not be expanding in. So they grow so big that it cuts off other supplies, it hogs up nutrients and resources, and that's what ultimately kills you. That's, that's the easy way to I mean, it sounds right. Jackson is smarter than I am, so I'm going to be quiet. And <laughs> what happens when they're exposed to CPH4? So I think Jackson looked this up. I mean, this is one of those, like, hey, we found a thing that's, a real thing in human biology and we're not going to really exp we're just going to throw it into the movie and then we're going to move on from it. <clears throat> according to wikipedia <laughs> <laughs> cph4 is an enzyme sometimes created by e coli um it makes tetrahydrobiopterin which is a cofactor to make hydroxylase which adds an extra oh to the end of organic materials which is a hydroxy um really <laughs> It helps well, your thank you for explaining that, Jackson. <laughs> but so really what it does is it helps your mitochondria create ATP, which is the energy your body needs to function. According to this film, <laughs> it's, what is it's like an atomic bomb for? for a baby. So it, for is, an infant. <clears throat> it, is an, it is a compound created in the, very specifically, only in the sixth week of pregnancy. Mm, I'm not buying that for one. I mean, I understand what the movie said. I'm just not buying it. Man, that six week of pregnancy, though, <laughs> just explodes in your belly. I mean, I don't want to start a whole debate. I think that's the powerhouse of the pregnancy. pregnancy then. 
<laughs> no, no, that one stayed. No, that stayed. Generally, <laughs> generally when someone snaps in the recording, it's a note for me to edit this bit out. That's sticking around, guys. I apologize for your eardrums. You can send all of your emails to jacksonbain.com. Sure. Yes, yeah, sure. sure. That's, a, that's a real email. Or 530.org. The B stands for Greg doesn't know when the baby starts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Um, but can we also talk? Uh, let's go back a little bit and um, talk about how back to like fifteen percent. Let's talk about the. Let's talk about when she's still functioning at below ten percent brain function. Mm-hmm. When they're um, talking I, about. I how, mean, are we saying she's just stupid? Is that what we're getting at? Did you see? She, she hooked can, up with a guy. She can with barely a, breathe. She hooked up with a guy in a Stetson cowboy hat. In a in a sweaty fake Stetson. Stetson hat oh, in Taiwan. So sweaty. Come on. But, she could do better. Yeah. So she wakes up with all these uh, gangsters. They, and she wakes up with an abdominal bandage just filled with like a couple drops of blood and then blood on her bed sheets and notices that she has, and I quote, a horizontal slit so they can put a package in her lower tummy. Yes. This came from a character we only know as the Limey, uh, who is a British doctor uh, and has the worst facial hair I've ever seen in film. It was just really bad. Yeah. But can we talk about things in the lower tummy? I mean, that's... The, that's. I'm trying to find my note on that because I think we all started laughing. I believe the medical term is the lower tumdomen. So, no. so uh, your, your... Your lower tummy? She actually says stomach, and then it's later that the it's doctor correct. She's corrected by is the doctor. corrected until tummy. And actually, in this case, tummy is the more appropriate word for some reason. Like... Your stomach is a very specific thing, yeah. and it is not where that incision no. is. Because the lower tummy holds what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jackson, what does the lower tummy hold? The pee bag? <laughs> it holds the baby maker, the pee bag. Uh, the egg carton? <laughs> the pee tubes? <laughs> so, yes. The poop, the poop cannon? <laughs> so Jackson is referring to um, the rectum? The uh, ovaries, the uterus. the uterus, the bladder, and the ureters, which are the tubes that come down from the kidneys to, to put urine in your bladder. Look, if you're going to use unprofessional terms like the lower tummy, I'm going to use unprofessional terms to describe the organs in your that tummy. The poop cannon? The poop like cannon. factory. That's funny. Um, but yeah, that's a really weird thing. Like, so this lady, I mean, this, this comes up later cause she's getting smarter and smarter, but refers to it as her lower tummy or no, she does. She did that when I, around 20%. She yeah. wasn't fully. And, and she was just flying around through walls or against <laughs> really walls. Right. I mean, so it's just like a very weird thing about using all of your brain, but also still being an idiot. Like yeah. cause it's in your lower if you're going to, and if you're going to hide something in somebody, that's a good place. If you go carefully, you can avoid the important things. But the problem here, though, is later in the movie, if we're going to jump ahead, they, she they, says that it was stored in their intestines. She does say that, and she is wrong. She's, and she's that is, wrong. And that is like, at about 90% brain capacity. Right. She shouldn't have been it, wrong It was like 60 point. or 70, because I made a specific note of when that happened, because she talked about how this 4-inch yeah. by 12-inch yeah, bag... Because that part is the food tube. <laughs> we did talk about this extensively in uh, Human Centipede. I mean, the other thing she got wrong is the weight of the drugs inside of somebody. If there's a good two kilograms in there, she's she says, "Oh, they're one kilogram bags." But earlier, the doctor who weighed it said they're five hundred. I thought that that I, I think that was actually accurate because I think that means that she absorbed half of it and somehow didn't die. Stop poking holes through our concept. I I disagree because she's talking about what the other people had. Right. The thing, the only thing I could imagine is she absorbed one of those bags. But she had the bag. But then she's no longer talking about herself. This movie was horrible. Uh, (laughs) That's the best I can do. So let's talk about before we start getting into the percentages breakdown, which (laughs) the movie helpfully gave us chirons of. 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. Twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent, and help and help me figure out how much more of this movie I had to watch. <laughs> it's really true. <laughs> there was, I mean, in a very real medical sense, since we're clearly rag- reaching at straws right now. But she busts into a surgical suite to get people to take um, to take these drugs out of her. Yeah, to do a drug activity. And there is 
I mean, there were just random X-rays and MRIs on the wall. Yeah, that's it, that's not a thing that really I. I feel like it's a thing that used to maybe happen where somebody has a really significant surgery, they have the imaging up so they can so, reference so it. If I they will need say to. this when they do brain like brain surgery and whatnot, they'll have monitors mm-hmm. with cyber knife or sorry, um, not cyber knife, that's for radiology or radiation therapy, but they'll actually have pointers where they can kind of locate and triangulate on mm-hmm. the head where it is with the three D model. So Google Maps for your brain. Kinda like that. Or Google Earth is probably a better way to describe <laughs> it. <laughs> Cause you can kinda zoom in. Because you can zoom in and out. Um, <laughs> But not so much with plain films, especially of someone's like abdomen or brain or something like that. I, I mean, the thing is, I can I can feel that that is a th- like, hey, they had a they had a medical person on set that was like, yeah, you know, you can put things in here and it looks more medical. But also, like that guy was not getting inner. There was no surgery on his brain at all. No. She comes in, she shoots this guy. The surgeon grabs his mask and pulls it down and Twice. just starts talking to her. Yeah, like that is not a thing. That that is. It, you do not touch your face. Yeah. Things I've learned from the, from this is, you know, when you're in the operating room, there's a 80% of your body that you're, you never the touch. The zone ever. is between your clavicle and your mid-abdomen. That's it, it. That's where you can touch. I will say, when I played a doctor on TV long ago, <laughs> they got real mad at me because I was in an OR scene, and they had x-rays of just random stupid stuff, and they got mad because I changed one of them to reverse it because the heart was on the wrong side. I, I mean, I, that's a, the most common thing I've seen. I have a theory, today. and it's that, so this is going to, I apologize, prevent you from ever being a medical advisor on a television show. How dare you? Uh, the people who are medical advisors on television shows haven't done medicine since they were not using computer monitors at all. I will say... They've been working in Hollywood, and so it's been, well, we're just using backlit x-rays. So there's a difference between medical advisor and continuity director, is what I learned. Um, The medical advisor usually participates in the script writing, and then will be on set to make sure that... The continuity advisor just makes sure that nothing gets screwed up. Correct. And the continuity advisor is the one who puts up stuff backwards and stuff like that. But they have to make sure it all looks. But as long as it's always backwards, then it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when I time. when I changed the X-ray X-ray back to the correct way, they got mad at me. I'm like, you haven't Absolutely. established a shot yet. You're fine. But it, but the got, continuity advisor had already taken all sorts of photos of the set. Yeah, I told him he was an idiot. He's did you doctor. get invited back, Jack? I did. <laughs> Is I'm it because you own your own scrubs? No. They also told me that as an ER doctor, I need to run more, and I said I'm not going to run in the ER. Nobody runs. The um, Fun fact too was that guy went to my medical school. There's a wait. There's another thing that <laughs> happened in this, which is like they make a big deal of the head bad guy washing his hands with like this fancy water. Yeah, right. With, with like washing all the blood off of his hands for a long time. Almost the right amount. Almost happy birthday to you. Almost all the way through the song. Right. That's how they teach you the right amount of time. You know what he doesn't use? He doesn't use any fucking soap. That is an important thing. I'm sorry, Johnny. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. Probably not. <laughs> we probably should. We'll play dolphin I, I, noises yeah. or something. To yeah. the... Dolphin but, noises might be appropriate because they do use 20% of their brain. But that, <laughs> but that is, I mean, like a really weird... They focus so much on him washing his hands. But also, you gotta, you gotta use some soap. Yeah. And he just goes in there. Uh, I think when you got a gun to your head, probably <laughs> you, make, you make a couple corners... I don't know. You, you've never <laughs> been in an operating room with a gun to your head? It's been a while. It's, it's been quite it's a while. It's been since med school. <laughs> I just, I think it's funny because this is at the point of the movie I was like, oh, well, you know, she has to be, you also, know, we have to be on her side so she can't, she can't do anything wrong. She can't like kill a dog or anything. And she just walks in and kills the guy on the operating table. But, and like, then says, well, well, he would have died yeah, anyway also, because he's got three gra- brain so tumors. How is she so smart at this point? Like she goes diagnosing that this guy has an inoperable brain tumor, even though they're clearly in the OR trying to operate on this guy. She's not done any research. They're, on they're not operating on his brain, though. <laughs> yeah, but how did she download all this information in there? So like, I can buy her translating things because, oh my God, I, you know, it's, it's I'm, pro- I'm able to process everything I've ever heard, and so I can now speak yeah. Korean and Mandarin and, and et cetera, et cetera, But how did she know all this anatomy? But and that's Exactly. A, and that's something that was kind of frustrating about this movie. Like, I like Limitless, like... It's it's a similar premise where Future somebody episode. takes a drug and all of a sudden they know everything, but they sort of they try explain it in the way of like, hey, anytime you know you ever saw something in your life, it sort of is 
stored somewhere in your brain and they they edit it in a way that it makes it look like it makes sense and in this she's just fuck she's just Ooh, in this, I'll just I, this one's just not going on Pandora. Sorry, folks. Explicit rating for this one. In this one, she's just like anything she can think of, and, and she's right, except for she's still calling it stomach and tummy and crap factory, which makes it nonsense. Like, you, if you're gonna be that clear about being right, then you have to be right. So when she dug the bullet out of her um, arm of a jigger, I guess. The, <laughs> that's, thank you, that's Dr. Bain. The, yeah. the medical word. But when she dug the bullet out, like, you, she should be so smart at that point. Why is she... Right, that's... I mean, if you are going to be like, hey, using all the knowledge you possibly could have, then the thing that you definitely shouldn't do if you have a foreign body in you is remove it, right? Yeah. The for, the, if, whatever. If Scarlett Johansson had listened to one episode of this podcast, she'd know that. Yes, yeah. she would. I mean, it comes it, up very frequently. It is the biggest trope is that people dig... Oh, I gotta get that bullet yeah. out. Yeah, it does nothing. If it's not bothering you, why create new problems? Just leave it be. Uh, also, dig around inside you and see what happens. In, in an open wound... <laughs> that's not medical <laughs> advice but relationship advice <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying 530 Dr. Orb nothing <laughs> nothing good will come out of digging inside of an open I mean if you have an open wound you should certainly clean it you should certainly bandage it you should tr- certainly put pressure on it no. but, but you, you shouldn't, shouldn't just use... dig around yeah yeah, that's not good um, let's so break leave that to the professionals yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I I just want to start like breaking down what we learned about what you can do wait at... before we get there can I just talk about um, Scarlett Johansson giving some great <laughs> advice to her friend yeah who partied hard oh <laughs> Yeah. That one got us real bad because we're probably going to be doing a goop episode in the future. Yeah, and... this was somewhere around twenty-seven percent of brain usage. Twenty-eight. At uh, twenty-eight percent. Yep. Oh she, yeah, because she just hit, she, then she made the phone call. Yeah. So she tells her friend that she's been partying too hard. Her liver is bad, and she should take these drugs. Liver and, and kidneys. And kidneys. And for some reason, she was able to write a prescription for a drug in because she was also well because she was also able to control all computers. Hmm. So, but that's not how prescriptions work. Prescriptions aren't... I mean, you write them physically. You always write them physically? You can't just do it? I mean, we sometimes, we sometimes do. Depends I mean, on I use scripts a lot. But still, I, how did she become a doctor to write this prescription? I assume she just hacked into somebody's e-scripting. You know how I didn't believe that she knew what she was doing right away? It's like, you should probably take these drugs and then just eat more organic. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Eating organic. You know what's uh, really easy to find in Taiwan? Organic, food. <laughs> U.S. organic food. Yeah. Uh, what are the regulations? The USDA definitely, yeah. definitely hold up in Thailand. Yeah, you know, because they don't use pesticides or anything like that over there. And honestly, it doesn't matter. Just eat better. It doesn't mean you have to eat organic. Just eat better. You know what the difference between organic food and regular food is? It's about five bucks. And <laughs> <laughs> they usually come from the same farms. And yeah. there's more likely to be poop on the organic food. Correct. But poop's good for you. Yeah. Wait. Guano. Yeah. <laughs> Take it back to guano. Take it back to guano, you guys. Medi- Wait, guano I feel like you didn't say that this wasn't a medical advice podcast. I think that's... It'll be up front. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's up front. And I've only forgotten that once. Yeah. Um... Okay, so I just want to take it back to when what Morgan Freeman says. Norman at the, Norman, Norman, Norman Greenman uh, says at the very beginning of his little speech, which is one neuron you're alive, two neurons <laughs> oh. you're moving. Oh man, I forgot about that. I don't, I don't know how to respond to that. Jellyfish have a neuron. We saw a lot of jellyfish. I don't. I don't, I don't know how to respond. Like, it's such a. It's such a ridiculous breakdown of such a complicated thing that it's just total nonsense. I I, I don't know what <laughs> what to say. So the, the thing is, neurons are not connected in series. They're connected in a very extensive web. So to say that when two neurons are touching each other, you begin you, you're able to well, move. Well, now you're moving, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so your brain's not a series of tubes. No, it is not a series Your of body tubes. is a series of tubes. It actually is. It is a giant tube where when you eat stuff, it is outside your body. We talked about this at mm-hmm. the Human Centipede. I think that might end up... We've talked about it on multiple episodes. It's <laughs> true. That might end up being When you first eat stuff, shirt. it comes out... It is outside of your body. It I is. am a series of tubes. You are a tube. But that's like the big thing. So 
Morgan Freeman saying that makes absolutely no sense. Um, he's, it's like his like his lecture sounds really good when it's intercut with all the like video montages, but that would be like the most nonsense lecture ever. Can I mean we already talked like he just has title cards up and he's just saying nonsense. You know when I knew that he was not a real uh, whatever he, we don't even know what he is. He's a brain professor. He's a brain professor? <laughs> yeah. He's yeah a, you remember all your brain professors. Yeah. What I remembered when I was in med school, my favorite class was brain. Brainiology? Yeah. <laughs> Not neurology, just brain. Was, was brain professor. Yeah. And I'm surprised how crowded his um, lecture hall was. Because if I saw a lecture like that, the first thing I would say is, Gwyneth Paltrow's here? But well, what if Morgan so, Freeman was giving it? Now, <laughs> what if it was Nelson Mandela? I'll, I'll listen to those sweet, dulcet tone voice, you know? Oof. You're telling me that if I called you voice. and said, Jackson, mm -hmm. I have tickets for a Gwyneth Paltrow lecture on neurology I'm at 6 o'clock, you gonna, wouldn't be in the car. I will have a, Where is the lecture? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't want to say the car. Balboa <laughs> Theater. <laughs> downtown. So, so reverse commute. So that's what. Is there an open bar? Uh, no, but it, but th there are bars across the street. May right? I have crystals? <laughs> <laughs> so you can understand it. Can you have a jade egg? I, I think that's what... BYO I mean. egg. BYO like, egg. As, as her brain power is amping up, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like... At 20%, she was able to fly around the room. Yeah. Dol and then at wait, wait, are you telling me at dolphin level? <laughs> at dolphin level, you could ignore gravity. They just don't fly, so they don't. Show and that's off. so it's so lazy. You already have like, hey, at twenty percent, you let's make her echolocate. Let's put her in a dark room, and she fuck, and she finds something. Oh, oh, yeah, again, yeah. explicit tag. You're good, Greg. <laughs> Can I just say this? Little, I remember this part. What you said was. Hey, it's our brain power that keeps us on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we would just float away. It's just nonsense. I and, can't. And I'm I'm sorry. This is gonna keep Luke Bason from ever coming on this show. But that oh, the no. fact that oh um, no 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 you haven't heard how much I love Fifth Element. So we'll, we can get we'll get there. there. Uh, we'll get there. <laughs> but the fact that he wrote it and directed it, so you can't even blame it on. Oh, there were rewrites. Oh, something got lost in but, translation. But also that I mean, this these is, are like, these are things that should have been caught. Like, oh, in an if, if, like if this is what you're saying happens at twenty percent, then maybe she should still be floating at fifty percent. Yeah, like literally, these would be on the same page of the script. I want her to float <laughs> around like Magneto floats around, just like walking around omniscient, like Doctor Manhattan almost. Like that's the picture that I would. Oh, have you seen the Watchmen? I did. Like, this oh, is not a Watchmen spoiler sorry, podcast, no. oh, but oh my good. gosh, as soon as we're done so recording, good. so good. Uh, also, there's a great podcast on Watchmen with uh, David Lindelof and Craig Mason. Who they only do every three episodes. Plug. Um, before we touch on what each percentage does, I have just. Eat, I like that we're in my notes. It just says eat organic. <laughs> <laughs> We're 40 minutes into this podcast, and we haven't got in, gotten into the meat, of, meat and so potatoes. Much, there's no meat and crap. potatoes. There's so much crap in it. But, um, That's because they're eating organic and vegan. When they catch all of the other drug mules, the, the Korean, Taiwanese, some nondescript Asian uh, gangsters put them in an operating or even a clinic room. Yeah. And they give them anesthesia. Well, they were already in a clinic room because it was the... Interpol's clinic yeah. or whatever. But they were giving him anesthesia by doing hover mask. Oh, yes. The I did. hover mask <laughs> I did. got me real bad. Mm -hmm. Because why... Is just, that like hover hand? It is. It, but why share the joy of anesthesia with one person when you, when you, you can share it with the room? <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. This is a common thing in, in TV. We're like... Doing doing area management is uncomfortable. You have to... You have to um, Manage Tilt the area. head back. You have to lift. You know, you kind push of, the chin into the mask. Yeah, because you want to create a really good seal. Otherwise, the air doesn't go into the person. But also, that's a really uncomfortable thing if you are a an okay. awake person that's just pretending to be knocked out on the table. And so you can see this mask is like about a quarter inch above this person's face, and they're bagging away. So this is basically would have been a, like Lisa Simpson gets braces 
sort of situation where everyone gets the giggles. <laughs> also, we had a guest to this room. Courtney showed up. Yeah, uh, Courtney's Hello. here. Dr. Courtney Nicholas weighing in, despite having not seen the movie, probably. Let's be honest. We're going to talk about how your brain works at certain percentages, so this is a good one. So yeah, but since Courtney is here and she's an expert in neonatal development, can we talk about CPH <laughs> one more time? CPH4. CPH4. So according to this movie... CPH4 is produced in the sixth week of pregnancy and it's like an atomic bomb of energy to the baby for development. As a neonatologist, can you help us with this? I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that is the atomic Those are bomb young babies of the baby? even for Courtney? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Can we hook and up these babies to a battery and power the matrix? <laughs> <laughs> Those are deep cuts. I think you really got thrown into the deep end about a random molecule that they made a drug out of that somehow makes people super duper smart. At 40%, they turn into dust on a plane. That's yeah. the thing that we've glossed over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we haven't even... We, we, we got, we, we, <laughs> we've only been up to 28%. She, yeah, she's only become, like, like Magneto-ish. Yeah, so, Courtney, this movie tells us how, how you change when you use more of your brain. Because we only like, use ten percent of our brain. With helpful title cards saying at what what amount of the brain you're using at any given point in time. Mm -hmm. So at forty percent, you become effervescent, mm -hmm. like Alka Seltzer. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> well, according according, you gain control of matter, mm -hmm. um, and somewhere between then, you could stop bullets. I mean, it's, but you don't have to, right? Why would you stop bullets? Because you can pull them out of guns with your brain. Right, exactly. This, I saw this movie when it first came out, In and the I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I love picking things apart and analyzing them and laughing about them. This made me not enjoy this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, there are some real issues here. Um, I, I didn't enjoy this movie, and I'm really surprised because. It had everything I would have wanted. I know, I know. Um, I mean, they started an IV in someone, and I don't know if babies do this, but can they really just suck up the rest of the IV bag <laughs> through their arms? Because <laughs> that happened in this movie. Well, I, that, I, I mean, even worse than that is like she sucked up all the IV fluid into her veins and then vomited it all out of her mouth. Yeah. I'm sorry. She fired a laser. <laughs> yeah. But she we're fired a laser ourselves. out of her mouth. So somewhere between 20 and 40%, she was able to... Pull the bullets out of guns, and also she was very proud of the fact that she called her mom to say that she could feel everything. She could feel the air. That was at twenty percent, by the way. That I think like that was 20, at twenty eight. Like, like twenty eight. <laughs> she could feel the heat leaving her body. She could feel her tongue in her mouth. It felt like she could just feel sensations. Yeah, <laughs> she, she would feel feelings. But when you say them in a very poetic way, it makes it feel like our bodies do a whole lot. Which they do. Which they do. She was able to remember how her mom's milk tasted. Yeah, and there's that. Aggressive. She also controlled her metabolism. Um, it, it, it's called a blanket. <laughs> Just put one on. Eventually, she was able to change her hair color and basically do a mystique with her hair. Yeah, I don't... I mean... This movie is amazing. Are you guys talking about a real movie? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. The 2014 classic Lucy. I don't know what to do. I. Uh, uh, it's tough. It was like. <sighs> my, uh, also, at this point in time in her, uh, in her, she was about to die within the next 24 hours because several million of her cells were reproducing every second. That's about right. Yeah. Second. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah. I like that all of us looked around like, well, okay. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> how, how many millions of my cells are reproducing right now? A lot. Probably several. Oh my gosh. Uh, one oh my gosh. gosh. We do a I, lot of turnover, especially especially in your lower abdomen. What did in you my say? Lower tummy. In your, in your lower, lower tummy. tummy. Mm -hmm. I can feel my finger yeah. on my nose right now. You yeah. have a lot of... Uh, There's so many things in your lower tummy. Papillae. We were talking about this earlier. Oh, you mean... Uh, Spaghetti worms? Yes, you have a lot of spaghetti worms. Spaghetti worms that break down. You have down a lot too. of surface area in your lower tummy in order to absorb water and nutrients. Medical or, show. You mean food Tumdemen, sponge? please. Tumdemen. <laughs> it's really hard to give actual... Where's Nisha so we can give some actual knowledge? Lower tumdemen. <laughs> right in that lower tumdemen, you guys. 
I almost didn't go into pediatrics because of the use of words like tummy and kiddo. <laughs> you could have gone into screenwriting instead. I, I also tell people that they have um, a lot of boom, they get, that the kids have to make boom boom. <laughs> oh, we just got a lot of boom boom. You got you got to go make a boom boom? Mm. You got hot cheetosis, you got a lot of boom boom. I've, I've told a couple people about hot cheetosis. Hot cheetosis is real. <sighs> there goes our free Olay sponsorship. I know. Um, uh, so my favorite percentage is <laughs> my favorite percentage is still number uh, at sixty percent. I really like it thirty percent, which is when you're omniscient because you know what's going on in Paris, France, and also you can control dogs. <laughs> it's true. She didn't look at that dog, and the dog backed up. I'm sorry. Sixty percent is the best because that's when you make mime walls. That's I don't know. Forty percent, you start losing teeth, and then you be- become for- the mummy. I forgot <laughs> from about the good, the mummy. Teeth. I don't. So at 60%, the only thing I wrote, I wrote down 60% and it just says, hey, we're late. <laughs> Which is like, somehow you're this omniscient person. Oh. <laughs> but also, ooh, we were a little bit late. We couldn't it's quite six, make it. It's, it's, no, that was, that was the car chase. Oh. Uh, where, where she, we're late, but it's just going to be fine. At 42%, so at 40%, she was on a plane and she had some champagne and then realized that her body was no longer the ideal point for replication of cbh for the blue confetti uh baby nuclear bomb drug and uh, <laughs> atomic bomb uh, i'm sorry atomic bomb uh and that's where she started losing teeth and then her skin just started floating out into the air in a dust spiral like in the mummy and then at 42 percent, after she'd walked into the restroom she became Katy perry no oh, with that's the true. with glitter all over mm-hmm, her face mm-hmm. you know what the best part about 40 percent is you're able to hack with computer typing. Yeah, with two computers. Page. Two computers. As long as I know seen... we're not a hacking podcast, but that is the dumbest typing I've ever seen in my life. Also, if there are any <laughs> hacking podcasts, I would love, I would love to be on. Them. It looked like a T Rex trying to <laughs> type is. on the computer. <laughs> she was just flipping her hand back and forth, and then it was just like boop boop boop, and there were so many things happening on the screen, which is just like, what are you? You guys could make this look. Like a possible thing that's happening. Not an ergonomics <laughs> podcast, but her wrist was way too high. I will high. say this. It looked like her fingers cramped after a while because she couldn't move them anymore. It's just cramping up. Like, don't worry. We're Definitely somebody said, we're going to fix this in post. And she's like, okay. <laughs> Flipping my hands back and forth. Uh, at 50%, you swap out your irises. And so you've got a leopard iris and you've got a uh, She was a iris. goat. She was a straight up goat at one point. Jackson, tell me about your goat history. Why do you know what a goat's iris looks like? Petting zoo. Story checks out. <laughs> At a Vietnamese New Year festival. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you had a lot of eye-to-eye time with a goat. <laughs> well, I went to go pet it. Munch. <laughs> uh, 50% is also, um, so we mentioned dodging bullets, but you don't have to. It's also where Greg brought up that she can pinch to Zoom conversations. Yes, this is true. <laughs> well, she was in the weird car thing, and like clearly somebody that did the special effects for the Matrix is mad because it had like scrolling code and people were broken up by code. And he was just she, mad that it was all green. Do you like, know what the code was? It was just Korean. <laughs> <laughs> was it? It was. That's great. It was just Korean letters or symbols. This is still a real movie, Courtney. <laughs> yeah, if Courtney. you can only be in this room right now with Courtney's just shocked face that this is a real movie. I really need to see it. No. <laughs> She's just like, I should have come earlier or later. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then where are we? At 60%, you can trap people in invisible boxes. That's true. That's when you get your mind powers. Yeah. Uh, the 60% moment for anyone who's read Way of Kings made me think of this is just a like deep I am fantasy not a wall person you guys um it, it's almost like you have tons of work to do no i'm illiterate there's that too <laughs> um uh there's like you can like control gravity and things in way of kings with one of the various special powers um and also you get horny at 60 oh, percent. that's right she gets horny for that cop yeah she kisses him so that she remembers what it's like to be human i don't remember her saying that What's this for? Uh, to remember. No, I get it. Yeah. yeah. She gets funny for that cop. <laughs> I can't argue with that. You know so what she, else she says that You know what percentage that was at, right? Sixty <laughs> nine. <laughs> so also in the sixty percent range, that's when she says 
we never really die. It is a throwaway line yeah. while they're driving. And he's like, oh, I don't want to die in this car. And she's like, we never really die. And then they just keep driving. Like, that's a big deal. You like, know who died? All those other people that crashed. There were so many There was crashes. a huge bus accident. Uh, she was driving down the sidewalk. It's just, that's a weird thing to throw out there and never address it. Can you imagine if the cop had been anything but a Frenchman? And, like, you know, not used to nihilism? <laughs> it's just... He'd have, they'd have to have a longer conversation. Yeah, but he's like, like whoa, yeah, whoa, no. pull over. <laughs> this movie yes, is life is so shit. <laughs> this Let's move on. This so bad. It's, it was a, it was a tough one. It was, this was a tough one. You weren't, we got to do The Resident one day and you will know me. No, I've seen The Resident. Oh. See, I can't sit through it. I, I, oh, I mean, I love The Resident. I don't have the, get out. <laughs> <laughs> that was Courtney Nicholas. I do. Is that that's the autistic child? No, right? that is the good doctor. Oh, that's the good also doctor. Fantastic. Oh, oh, more things in our future. I so I'm sad that our friend Kiki left, who was a military doctor, because there's now that what whiskey eighty six or something that's the that. medical doctor, the medical doctor, the military doctor show. I don't know really anything about it. Whiskey sixty eight. Whiskey si- yes. Sixty yeah. nine. Yeah. Probably not sixty nine, but sure. it's on network <laughs> TV. <laughs> Um, we're seventy percent. Seventy percent. You fire lasers from your mouth. Yep. You turn into Groot. Yes. I forgot and you start planting one. roots, um, and then you're able to connect to. You make that um, castle from the front of uh, the Little Mermaid from the clamshell case. Mm, that's yeah. Cool. That's the one what... with the hidden penis. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you said it. Yep. <laughs> I I was gonna go with the tower, Sauron's tower from Lord of the Rings. It's both. Yeah, it's both of those. Ninety <laughs> percent, um, you can quantum leap. <laughs> yes. Well, no, first eighty percent, you get the Matrix loading zone. Um, That's true. Or, or oh, Janet's you void. You go to Janet's void. But you also yeah. take, you know, all of the. I don't even. Were those other doctors? The Wachowskis have to be upset about this movie. Yeah, because they're in the loading zone of the Matrix. Except for the fact that they probably really liked Luke Besson. Because Fifth Element came first, and he was like a, oh, let's be creative with science fiction. So maybe it was a lovely homage, and not, no, it's just I've crap. made one good movie. No, I mean, that's a lot That's a lot to take from someone else's movie. I mean, whatever, I'm sure that they borrowed from stuff too. It's just, that, like, that's the loading zone. It's like, oh, a big white room where nothing is except for whatever you put in there. Yeah. yeah. But at 90%, you quantum leap. Yep. So. And then... And then you also DVR powers, too, so you can touch a monkey. <laughs> yeah, I expected that to be like a E.T. moment of, oh, she's sharing all of her knowledge of the future so that his cells know how no, to that's evolve. The that's the whole that's That the was Lucy? And Lucy. That's the whole point. I we think. didn't even talk about where the title of this movie comes from. We did. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Lucy the Australopithecus. Damn. I didn't even look that up. I had a really good biology teacher freshman year. Um, they are proud of you right now. Yeah. Possibly? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> um, Not with us, though. <laughs> uh, which was the first... First... Yeah. I can say Australia, Australia Pithecus. I can't say first. Um, first. First, first discovered. Um, Sounds like someone's using 10% of their brain. Mm. <laughs> uh, first discovered human hominid fossil i believe i just remember it was australia pithecus and then lucy uh, i tried it was in a song oh uh, <laughs> with lucy diamonds. in the sky with diamonds <laughs> That's what I remember. wait was that song about something else i have no idea no yeah <laughs> and then 100 percent, you're dead but you are also everywhere you're definitely in an old nokia 61 10. I want to say it's 61 10. Oh, I had You're on a flip phone. That was not a flip phone. Oh, that was a flip phone. It was a flip phone. phone. Fudge. Fudge. Yeah. (laughs) Apparently, when you hit 100% brain capacity, you end up in flip phones. But you also crack the screen just like we do. (laughs) (laughs) And how did the. That was just how the movie ended, right? Yeah. She ended up in a flip phone and. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. I thought it was going to end like. Space Odyssey, with with her like uh, there was there was so much space. 
There was a lot of space. There was a lot of space, and then space became jellyfish. She ended in a USB drive. What? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, did right. she ended up in a USB drive. A sparkly USB drive. Actually, that was pretty sparkly. Feminism. <laughs> <laughs> she was able to compress herself into a shape that we understood that could be put into a machine we could use. That's a lot of porn. <laughs> <laughs> that was specifically for Blue Balls Detective. Yeah. He, he needed it. Mm, yeah, Blue Balls Detective was real upset when Lucy disappeared. My poor Johnny is like, I, what platforms can I upload this to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, it's probably Flash, so we can't even <laughs> run Lucy anymore. It's true. Yeah. That's Technology moves pretty fast. Yeah. You know? If you don't stop to look around every once in a while, you might miss it. <laughs> you know what this movie Johnny, if this Johnny, thank you. <laughs> if this movie ended with like Scarlett Johansson in a <laughs> turban of towel, that would have been fun. But yeah, that was a uh, that was a not great movie. That was not a great movie. I'm I'm gonna it take sounds it. Sounds like a great movie. <laughs> it does. Right? Doesn't you say this because you showed up late. <laughs> you need to watch it and go why. I I, I want to take it all the way back to the very first line of the film, <laughs> which was life was given to us a billion years ago. What have we done with it? I'm sorry. Life was given to you 4,000 years ago. 8,000 years ago. I'm so you're going biblical. I'm joking. Uh, but if you're going... Look, I'm already getting letters this scientific. time. Scientific. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going scientific, uh -huh. bacteria, 3.5 billion. Fungi, 500 million. Mammals, 200 million. So literally the first line of this movie was wrong. Was just no wrong matter what you look well, at. He's only working with 10% of his brain. So <laughs> But it sounded right because it was Morgan Freeman. It does. He no one no one would fact check Morgan Freeman. Got that crop to us. I, but, wouldn't, I wouldn't even fact check him as a penguin. I gotta be honest. As a penguin? Isn't he the voice of the penguin? Mark's the penguin. He's not. He's not like playing a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> I still wouldn't fact check him as a penguin. My statement. Checks all, out. all he would do is <laughs> wank, 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 quack. Quack? I believe it. Quack, quack. <laughs> quack. That's the title of this episode. Sorry for my horrible reference. So. So, um, I, I do have... I'm, I, I, I'm, I've I'm got a face of shame right now. This is an audio-only podcast. Uh -huh. So you can't see me literally covering my face as I say I have an important question. I know where this is going. And that question is... <sighs> Big sigh, but not. Oh, the scoff count is not a scoff. Um, <laughs> we, had, we had an internal scoff count going as characters scoffed at each other. Um, <clears throat> the human centipede bills itself as 100% medically accurate. If that's the case, and if that is our baseline, how medically accurate is Lucy? Ten. Ten. Are we only using 10% of our medical accuracy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is probably the most fitting number I can give to this is ten. I mean, people don't float. <laughs> like, that... I saw a like magic that's, thing that with maybe, David Blaine, and he floated. That should have been the end of the movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, or her becoming dust. That should have been the end. There was still, like, an hour and a half after those things happened. The idea this movie, that she's taking and that's crazy because this movie was an hour and a half. I know. <laughs> this it happened was, real early. This movie is ninety minutes long, and I am it four and a like, half years older. Yeah, I uh, had hair. I, I got to agree. I mean, I think if you're if you're gonna make the best and jokiest answer, it's ten percent. Like, yeah, it can't and, it can't be better than and that. If, and even if you think about the medical stuff that. The anesthesia with the hover mask. Right. It's like anything that is medical is also immediately The wrong. IV where she chugged IV bags through her veins. Where they also and... used basically a uh, a basketball inflated needle to put an IV into her forearm. You mean the first time we've seen that. The you, mean the shooter, you mean the shooter needle? The episode <laughs> 2 needle. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else was there? Everyone getting shot with the brightest red blood known to man. But that's a stylistic choice. That is not. That's just I mean, a surprise. That's a stylistic choice, except for all the other choices they made around the 
Um, but really, the biggest sin in all of this is the ten percent of the brain kind of thing. That's, okay, that is the biggest sin. But this isn't a comedy podcast. Is it? Yeah, no. yeah. It technically it's TV and film mm. according to, to uh, it depends iTunes. on who the guests are. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> if you weren't going to go just ten because it's the easy answer. I think that's ten is the right. Answer. I think it's the right answer. It is the okay. right answer. It is. Ten sounds generous. It's but if it, that's based on the human centipede, the human centipede saying they're a hundred percent, which is already wrong. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like it's not zero. We're they're saying hey, there a, are people in it, and those people drink water. Yeah. That's some percentage. <laughs> yeah. We're saying it is as one tenth as accurate as the human centipede. That exactly. And I will say that is true. Okay. Even non-jokingly. I think that's but about very okay. joking. I, I, I wanted to make sure you were taking this seriously because this, you know, this is a serious podcast. Obviously, mm. taking what seriously? Um, huh. <laughs> our, our our highly scientific and methodological. I only write that word out so I don't know how to say it. That's right. Yeah. Cool. Um, evaluation of these films. Yeah. So I'm glad that we, we approached all agree. it with the same gravitas that Morgan Freeman approached talking about penguins. Yeah, ten percent is now. You guys remember the penguin movie? Ten percent will keep me on the ground. That's all. That's all we got. Yeah, Yeah. it would have been a well-grounded movie at ten percent. That's that's what I gotta say. No, Um, that's. I'll take it. Sometimes I ask, "How would you make this film?" More medically accurate while Don't keeping the stakes movie. high. Here's the thing: who's who's the director? Luke Besson. So what's his I, name again? I don't know. We've heard. We I heard love Fifth enough. Element. Yeah. I do not want to badmouth this guy. Have you seen Valerian yet? It's I, so bad. And I like Valerian. I actually uh, like Valerian. Did not like Valerian. I fell asleep like three times. Hey, Luke Besson, I'm willing to have you on my personal podcast about sci-fi stuff. The Greg Winter podcast. Just come hang out at my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Winter's Bone. <laughs> just give me that heads up now. Ooh, that's <laughs> just as bad. I like it. It has uh, a black couch. <laughs> I, I do. I can't be mad at that. Uh. <laughs> that <one. laughs> um, I. It's like when I watched this movie the first time. I I was like, this is fun. This is a fun, enjoyable rom. Look at this. This great. Like MTV style editing and like MTV style. That's all that you can like. What there's what is happening in this movie? And then also it doesn't even agree with itself. But also it was kind of fun. But it just doesn't hold up to anything. I'm not mad at it. I just disappointed. I I think it's. I mean, I think it's worth watching. But also, I think you're gonna be sad by the end. Right? Like I. Are you it's sad this? because she disintegrated? <laughs> no, and I just, turned into a it's USB like drive that sparkles. It's not. It's it's like it wasn't. Ba- I wasn't like, oh fuck this movie. Or yeah, you know, seriously, screw this good. movie. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not taking that time. <laughs> There's only four, six. I had two. <laughs> but it's it's like this can be enjoyable, but I also think it holds up to no scrutiny. So you can you can you can definitely sit down and watch it and enjoy it. So we compared this to Limitless, um, both the movie and the TV show. If this was like a Fox, I'm sorry, a CBS or CW drama, a Disney affiliate, a Disney drama, a non Disney affiliate, <laughs> Disney Plus, um, a like CBS or CW drama, I'd probably be more okay with it. I I agree. Yeah. yeah. But it, it feels ex- like it would do better if it was like, like there was cheesy. some more fleshed out stuff. Yeah, if it was kind of case of the week, like yeah. percentage of the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or if it this or, week, Lucy hits ten <laughs> percent. Right. Or if it had been direct DVD. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I th- I think this needed to be flushed out. I you know what? This could have benefited from some notes from somebody. It could have been <laughs> benefited from not having the act, the director, and the writer being the same person. Yeah. Um, it got the George. Yeah. It, it's, it's it's it got George Lucas. Yeah, it, it's the prequels. Yeah, mm. I don't know how <laughs> those are really bad. But honestly, Lucy <laughs> only uses ten percent of midichlorians. <laughs> nice. When she fully taps in, she uses four. Seconds. That would be pod racing. I would watch this again before I watched the prequel. Attack of the Clones. <sighs> mm, no, thank you. And that's hey, 
everyone to each their own but enjoy your own things yeah but to say how would you make this more medically accurate pass <laughs> like i mean the the premise is wrong the right? premise, the is, premise wrong. is wrong so you that probably makes it really make tough. the drug mule seems probably a little more accurate i guess you know, you don't have to. <laughs> I, I, you don't I, have to sew it in the lower tummy. I forgot my second question. <laughs> what? What would happen if you kicked someone in the stomach when they're oh when they were full of drugs? Um, it it gets rocket propelled into your bloodstream as we saw in this music or in this, with fire in this video. Yes, because everything, all those drugs were highly combustible and they all exploded in bellies. So, I mean, sorry, lower tummy. Yeah, lower tummies. This, this would not be the first group of people to try to smuggle drugs somewhere inside of their person. And sometimes the way that they do that, those containers erupt in the body. Do they generally use saw methodology of, we're just going to cut you up and put it in you, as opposed to, no. hey, swallow yeah. this condom. And they would just, Wait. not a <laughs> They would use your available podcast. holes. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Still outside of your body. Mm. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Actually, once... If you don't, if you don't use the available holes, you're going inside of your body. Otherwise, you're outside. Yeah. We're just so, tubes. We're so, just tubes. Yeah. Lucy the and Lucy are a series of tubes. Yeah. And Lucy, they put them inside their bodies. But the real way it's done is it's outside your body. Yeah. So I assume that my bloodstream right now has ten percent of the fire that we saw in Lucy. Like there, there is ten percent of that amount of flame. I only in kicked me right you now. two or three times, so okay. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but yeah. Kicking someone in the belly, I don't think those bags would rupture because there's nothing for it to press against to actually cause a rupture. Because it's it's really hard to cause like a hollow organ. You're, you're being what real someone, analytical. What if someone is also about some plastic bags inside of someone else's? Body? I mean, those crystals look pretty sharp, though. Courtney's face is the best face. Right yeah, maybe like, Bill Murray it. put like a steel plate in there. Like, I mean, maybe they hit a river. It's just it's a nonsense premise. But also, the whole idea of it makes it zero sense. Like, guess what? We use more than 10% of our brain. Case closed. Like, that is what it is. And I'm going to counter with, nuh uh. <laughs> <laughs> but what if? But what if? This isn't CNN, guys. We don't need to hear both sides. Ooh, take that. This, this is t- Burn. Burn. <laughs> Burn CNN. But yeah, the movie's terrible. Yeah. I'm still trying to decide if I liked it or not. I did like yelling about it. I I, I'm gonna watch it. We did a it's lot. It's only of ninety minutes. We did a lot of yelling about it, and it was ridiculous. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna talk about this movie longer. Have we ever talked about a movie? Oh longer? yeah, I know uh, we've talked about TV a show. TV show longer. I think like Human Centipede show. was longer than Human Centipede, at least before editing. Anyways, so um, with that, thanks for listening. <laughs> if you're I, still listening, look. If yeah, you're still listening, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this was a rough episode. This this was this was possibly the guys, worst thing we've watched. And you know you don't have to invite me to do this. No, no. Here's the thing: we want you here because that's how we get joys like the Human Centipede and Home Alone. Yeah, I need to listen to that Home Alone episode, folks. I'm gonna be honest and say that Lucy was In the, the hardest diamond. thing I've watched. I've it was, a, worse, it was no, worse than The Resident for me, no, because I'm not a doctor. No, this was easier to get through than The Resident. I would have far. I would have liked this more had I not known I had to talk about it. Fair. Yeah, had, had you not guys, been taking notes? Yeah, had you, had yeah. you been able to turn your brain off? But the minute you turn your brain on... Ouch. We turned our brain <laughs> on for, for Hobbs and Shaw, though, and Hobbs and Shaw was delightful. Yeah, thanks for the invite. I think you were invited. Look, no, no. <laughs> Here's the thing: when we get to two hubs, two shawl, we'll be good. <laughs> two hubs, it's okay. I love. I. I mean, when we do two hubs, two shawl, lost in New York, we'll be okay. <laughs> two hubs, two shawl, back in the habit. <laughs> uh, no, Jungle, I, two hubs, two shawl. I love Hobbs and Shaw. I love those movies. I'm so happy that they made a Hobbs and Shaw one. And then when when you guys were like, "Oh, we're doing that," and I was like. Oh yeah, well I'm just gonna watch it at my house. That's <laughs> fine. Hobbs and Shaw, Chamber of Secrets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a really good one. All right. And with that, folks, thank you for listening. Please don't watch Lucy, and uh, we'll be back with you next week. I from... think you should watch it. Yeah. Just don't think about it. Yeah. Uh, that's a great idea. <laughs> but not medical advice. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back with you next week with more. Hi everybody, a bad medicine podcast. Thanks for listening, you guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs>